Hi, I'm Roxy and I'm currently sat in the middle of Richmond Park in central London. Today I'm going to show you how to film the red deer rut. the joys of wildlife filmmaking. It's five in the morning, but if you want to see the day out, you have to get up nice and early. We got to the park, found the deers, got all set up. Haven't really had the best sunrise this morning and we've only got one stag nearby, so I'm a bit worried about whether we'll actually see any rutting. It's like completely silent here, which isn't a good sign. Because we're here before sunrise, the light is really, really low, which in most cameras would be something that you're going to be struggling with to retain a high quality of your image. However, on the S1H, they have something called dual native ISO, which means that you can swap the kind of optimum ISO range between two different settings. So when you're shooting in low light like this, you can still retain a lot of high image quality. We've had absolutely no luck this morning. It's kind of a bit of a shame because there's like complete silence here. We haven't even heard any bellowing, no clashing of antlers. It's like the rut hasn't even started yet. There's loads of photographers here all hoping for the same thing and we're all gonna go home empty handed today, but we're really hoping that tomorrow we may be in luck and see what we came here to see. Yesterday morning was so quiet. I was worried we weren't going to get the shots that we needed, but like this morning is completely different. There's so much action. The deers are constantly bellowing and fighting. So I'm so glad that we got what we came here to see. One thing that's really important to know when you're coming here is that the deer are literally built to fight at this time of year. Everything in their body is telling them to fight anything and everything that comes their way. So as a photographer or filmmaker, you need to be really careful that you're maintaining a really safe distance away from the deer and you're constantly watching your surroundings to make sure that there's none coming from behind you and that you're not going to basically get stuck in between two big male stags. A good general rule of thumb for shooting wildlife is that to try and get on their eye level, filming at the same level as them and their interactions are happening because then you feel more like you're with them and you're with that scene rather than looking down onto them or up towards them. Obviously you can use those angles to create things more stylistic, but in general I'd say that when you're filming wildlife, always try and get on the same level as their eyes. I'm using the 100-400mm to to telephoto lens but sometimes when I'm filming wildlife, it's still not quite enough. But the really good thing about this camera is that you can actually swap between the full frame and a crop sensor of Super 35mm, 
which means that you can just punch in that little bit closer to the wildlife while still maintaining that really high quality. So you can just get those beautiful close-ups of their antlers and their fur whilst maintaining a safe distance. So for wildlife, it's like a really handy tool to have. So just in front of us, we have a male with a massive group of females around him. The light's not ideal, but we've decided to basically just sit and wait where we are because we'd rather get the behavior shots. And that's basically something you have to choose a lot of the time as a wildlife photographer or filmmaker. It's like getting that behavior versus having that beautiful light that you want. If you see something happening, some really cool bit of wildlife action that you want to film, I really recommend starting off on a big open wide shot because what you don't want is that you try to punch in, get in nice and close, spend time faffing around, setting up the framing, working on your focus for it then to be over. So when filming wildlife, I'd always start on a big open wide shot, get the action covered so at least you have it and then gradually get closer and closer so that you can then get those close-up shots, those fine details that you're wanting, but you don't miss it just in case they do stop it and then you've missed your chance of basically getting what you were hoping to get. 